Hi, and uh, good day, everyone. Mark Wolf here with the Emergency Reporting, and we are here for Virtual Thursday, our ninth edition for the year so far. And uh, we welcome everyone, and we've got a few items to uh, discuss with you before we get started. Today, we're going to be talking about fire codes, which is a new feature that we've implemented recently, and we're going to give the information on that. And uh, if you uh, have any questions, I'll mention this again, but please put them into the chat and we'll address them. I have uh, with me um, James Andrette, regional trainer, and Greg Simmons, our another regional trainer here helping me out monitoring questions and they'll let us know if we've got any uh, to answer as we're going through the presentation. And I thank them for uh, being on board with me today. Uh, we do have an announcement before we uh, get started reviewing the fire codes. And the announcement is you may have seen this at the top of your home page in uh, the area we call ISA or in-system announcements is we are doing a full release on the occupancy module update here um, August 20th in our commercial or .com accounts and in our Maple, which is our Canadian accounts. So that will be uh, deployed on August 20th. We're going to do that deploy that particular day a little later in the day. Um, as we know, most of our uh, fire prevention folks out there doing inspections should be done with conducting their work at that time. So we'll delay that a little bit. Um, and August 25th, if you're an ultra secure account, which is uh, usually our Department of Defense accounts in that, um, that deploy is going to happen on August 25th. And you'll, you'll see that. One of the biggest reasons that we are doing the update to the occupancy module in addition to adding some new features to it it's the increased security we get with the architecture that's in the background of the particular modules there and the occupancy module is one of those uh that we're concerned with on that so it increases our high security to it, even another level all the baiting beta testing has been concluded i think you can still put in remarks if you'd like to through the feedback available at the top of the page um, whenever they do the full release on that deploy on August 20th or 25th, the legacy pages will be retired and you will not be able to go back to them. And uh, there is in the handouts available on your in your control panel for the uh, webinar today is a uh, printout of some details of that changeover that's going to happen on August 20th and 25th. So uh, again, if you have questions today, please put them into the chat. We'll try to answer all of them as they come in. And my uh, partners out there, James and Greg, will interrupt me if we need to, and we'll uh, jump right into your question to uh, give you some answers with that. And we ask you to please stay on topic today as we are talking about the fire codes. And we are expecting a, a large group of attendees today. We have uh, quite a few people that are registered for the presentation. Also want to mention our training opportunities, our uh, virtual Thursdays, like we're doing today, they're free. Typically happen at the first Thursday of every month at 1100 hours. We have been sliding a couple of them in, um, either the third or first, fourth Thursday of the month, depending on uh, the needs and what we have going on. We do have uh, the availability to do online training in three hour blocks. We can customize that to meet your needs. On-site trainings, which as of this moment are mostly put on hold due to travel restrictions due to COVID, and also our regional training academies that have been all um, canceled for the rest of the year. We're uh, starting to schedule them for next year. We've got a couple to uh, mention to you of when they are more to uh, come down the pike, and we'll probably get to the same at least the areas or regions that they were scheduled for that got canceled for this year. Um, however, we do have two that are scheduled currently. The first would be in Jacksonville, Florida, April 13th through the 15th, and Charlotte, North Carolina, August 3rd through the 5th next year. Use this web link, emergencyreporting.eventbrite.com, to see a full list. And you can also go into our marketing site, emergencyreporting.com, Select the option stack on the upper right hand corner. Some folks call it the hamburger. Um, go to the customer success page, training and learning center, and you can see the full list of regional training academies. Or you can email us at training at emergencyreporting.com and we'll get back with you. 
on that. And with all of that, we are going to end the slideshow. And we will jump right into the presentation today. So we are going to go into the occupancy module is where we're going to start out with today. And that's where uh, the fire codes will re be residing. And I think that I saw a question come in. James or Greg, do we have one that we need to answer right away? I saw question somebody had their hand raised, Mark, but I don't see a question. Okay. There's a question there about where the handouts are located, Mark. Um, I don't know if you can show the screen I, of the control uh, panel maybe or not. I, you know, I've never accessed it from the uh, that side of the webinar out there, uh, but there is a handout section in your control panel, and there's a uh, a document. It's a PDF document that we can you can download, and I can see it on my screen, but it's from our side of the the presentation. But it, it's available in the handouts. I've never uh, looked in there before, so I see. Maybe somebody put a comment. Okay, and Jay is thank thank you both Jay and Tom. It's uh, right below the audio and above the question section on there. Perfect. Thank you very much. Okay, so the uh, fire codes. We're going to talk about a few things before we actually get to the fire code section. There's a couple things that you have to do um, to initiate this within your account so we uh, went to the occupancy page and we're going to the settings so you will have to have admin level access into the settings in the occupancy module and once we're there we're going to drop all the way down to inspections so in this section here there's a couple places we need to uh, hit the first one being the inspection question observation values a very very important step here you have to do this or you cannot view the fire codes in your um, inspection form I'm going to come up here to the upper right and select to add a new observation value and you'll see what we have is we can put an observation value in and we're going to put one in that is And I'm going to just put a note behind it because I've already got this particular observation value in and mine is a as you can see the texture violation corrected and I'm going to have to check this box right here show fire code then I'm going to save that as you can see I've already got one in here that's violation corrected now one of the issues that we know and we're going to talk about is that you cannot edit your current observation values so you have to add a new one and the way I did it it was kept it that it's violation corrected but it's attached I have enabled the fire code and you'll see one right up here above where we have created one already called fail and attached it to the fire code so even I try to select these and here you'll note I cannot edit those and we don't know if that checkbox is checked so that's this is step one you'll have to add new observation values and uh, to link them to the fire code just like I did there okay with that we're going to jump into the fire code area of inspections and at the bottom link under inspection so we're back here in the settings inspections and all the way down here at the bottom where we have fire inspection codes and this is the page we are directed to so a few things about the page before we get into actually how we get these uh, fire codes inserted in here first we want to talk about the grid setting so up at the top of the page to the far right we've got our little settings button here we'll uh, give that a good old mouse click and we can deal with our grid layout settings so uh, compact and comfortable which is going to show us or display the text on the page size basically and then 
we actually have the columns that we can turn on or off. So if I'm not using, for example, any secondary descriptions, I can turn that column off. Or if I would like to reorder these, so if I want code title before the number, I can just drag that. And I drug it a little bit too far. We'll get it right back here. So we can change the order of these if we need to, if we desire to do so. Let's get that back where it needs to be, the way I like it. Okay, number and then title, and that's the default setting. So once you arrange these, if you choose to do that, you can save that, and it will update your grid to those settings right there. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's your particular choice. You do have at the top of the page here, uh, I want to point out that you do have uh, the ability to search through the grid. So if you're looking for a particular code, and I know this with the fire codes are very, very long, this list can grow um, pretty quickly. So if I uh, have, let's say, some uh, codes in rule three, if I type that in, press enter, you see I can use that as a filter to narrow the lines and rows on my particular page. And I'm gonna select to uh, clear those search parameters up here to up and to the right of that again you can uh set the order the way you need it you can turn or turn off turn on or off columns depending on your needs um, to display the uh, fire code information in the grid that's with the grid settings and being able to filter the list by using the searches beneath the uh, titles of the different columns in here Okay, so um, we've got a few other buttons up here at the top we're going to talk about. First, the template that you can use to import fire codes is available here where it says download template. This is a CSV file type, but it will open up as an Excel spreadsheet, but it is saved as a CSV file type. All of our import templates have to be saved as a CSV file type before you can uh, upload them or import them. I'll show you how to do that. If you have uh, fire codes, for example, on a spreadsheet already, you can use that file. One thing you have to do, a step, very important step, is to select Save As. And you're looking for this file type, CSV, comma, delimited, from the list. And this is a, a Windows machine. I do not have an Apple device here. There is a uh, similar list and that you'll come down here and find that file type so you change it from an excel workbook into this uh common delimited dot csv file type and then you can import that there's a step that you'll have to do to import them it's called mapping um, and one of the reasons for that let's go uh, back out here as you can see let's expand all these out so we can see all the titles of the columns this is what we called the, uh, all the columns, the titles for them. You may have titled them something else. In mapping, you can match up basically what you titled the column to, to what we titled it to. Now, when you do this import, there's actually only one field that is required. And it is in column I, and it, I'll highlight it red there, the text red, code title. This is the only field that is required in here. You don't have to import any of these other fields, although it would be make a lot of sense to put the appropriate um, code sets, numbers in, and titles as it applies to uh, what you want your, your uh, fire codes to look like. And we'll, we'll go into that. I've got another template I'm going to show you here in a little bit with that. So we're going to turn that off and come back out to this page. So uh, we've looked at the template. I've given you a couple hints about it. So um, what we're going to do is manually create and add a fire code. So we've got the button at the top of the page on the right side here to add the fire code. And you can see if I scroll down on this particular list, code title has a red asterisk, which means that is the required field. Uh, basically, uh, this is the same fields and columns in the template. I'm just going to call this code set test one. Just to keep it simple, book one, 2020 edition. Um, we're going to have uh, 
chapter one. We're going to call it rule one. Section number one, section title is, is optional, but we need to put it in here in specific. Um, hey, number. Mark, something somebody asked if you want to kind of maybe address why now. Um, lost his question there. He said, um, is there any chance that you can have the IFC already in a template? Do you want to address as to why that's not? Sure, that is an absolute great question, and I see Ryan ask that. Um, so, Ryan, we have determined that we really have an issue with that because of copyright issues. So we don't have a um, template with the IFC already filled into the template. So it's going to be up to uh, customer base, you folks, to um, create those templates. And hopefully you'll share them with uh, partners in your area, folks that you know that are ER users, and if they want to import them as well. Because if you have a, a file, uh, put all the data into a template and upload it into your account, they can certainly do that into their account. Um, so basically it boils down to... Uh, some copywriting issues. Um, we won't be initially at least supplying a template filled out with IFC. So um, we'll just move on here. Hopefully that's a, you can understand that um, answer. It's one of the ones that I first asked when we were first looking at that a while back and seeing some demos of this. And I put a code description in. Build in all the fields. And we're just going to go ahead and save this. And when we have just created that, I am going to go down and see that we did create it right here. So we've got our code set. Test code set one. No, that's there. I did this one down here just now. Test one, book one, edition 2020, as you can see across here, that's how we would get that information in and display it. So uh, you can do this a couple different ways. You can add your fire codes manually, or you can import them via that template that um, we just displayed to you. So what I've got started is, and I want to have this discussion with you folks, is on the template, um, I've created a couple. So I put in a code set for uh, NFPA codes, NFPA uh, 13, which is a sprinkler code, edition 2019, and have that information. I just picked one out and, and put it in here. Now, another way we can do this, instead of doing a lot of typing, on here is to do this and I am having to grab another tab I'm gonna bring it over here um, and there we go I, I'm based out of Ohio and this has been uh, available for quite some time is the Ohio fire code which is based on the international fire code is available uh, online in the Ohio Administrative Code. So basically I've gone uh, to the Ohio Administrative Code and went to the section for the Division of State Fire Marshal and went down to the Fire Code section and you can see all the text with all the titles and code, text of the code is available on this particular page. And now somebody must not be liking this because you can see I've got the uh, spinning wheel death here. What I was gonna show you is now we've got that corrected my page is responding again within the hundreds and hundreds of pages of the Ohio Fire Code is all the sections in here. So I want to, let's jump back over to my template. And I was seeing if I had a specific chapter or rule that I was looking for. And what I'll do just to make this easy, I'm going to put my this tab on my other screen so that I can grab some information off of it. And it's gonna 
mess me up and not be responsive. So let's just take a moment until it gets responsive and see uh, if James or Greg, we have any other questions out there? Perfect timing, Mark. Um, yes, Josh would just ask, is there a limit on codes we can enter? And he lists various codes. He wants to know if there's a limit on how many he can enter. No, to my knowledge, there is absolutely no limit. Uh, but one thing I do want to show you, and it's a great question because if I am putting in data, manually entering it, or if I put it into the template, you'll have to respect the character limits that we have established here. They have them listed for each field. So um, as you can see for code set, up to 50 characters. Um, we've got these uh, down here for the chapter rule title, up to 255 characters. And for the uh, section title, code number, and so forth, all the way down. And down here, I do not know of a limit. So we don't have anything displayed here. So there must not be a limit for the code description or the secondary description. But some of the individual fields are restricted for the number of characters. I don't know of any limit to the number of codes that you put in here. So that should help out quite a bit. So what I'm going to do to kind of show you how, how I would do this, and we've done this on a, a, a couple different occasions. We actually sat down and went through the online version of the Ohio Fire Code quite some time ago, me and my assistant chief before I retired, and we did a copy-paste you know, as we built our inspection form. So we could do the same exact thing in here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to put in Type in a couple things that is kind of easy in Ohio Fire Code and chapter or rule. We call them rules here in Ohio. Fire service features. And then we're going to go over when we get into the nitty gritty here and we're going to go down and pull something. Here, I'm just going to do a copy and paste. I'm going to skip the section number, go right over here to the code number, and paste that in, and my title. And this is all available on that sheet, the uh, page that I showed you. And when I do a copy and paste, and I'm going to get the actual text of the code, copy, and put that in the code description field, just like that. And if I had a secondary um, description that I needed to put in. I will go ahead and put it in here. I'm going to skip that for right now and basically show you what we're doing with this. It's a very simple copy-paste process. So if you can get to the codes on some type of um, online version or if you have a subscription to the NFPA or your state's version of the uh, International Fire Code, all of those items, you should be able to do that copy-paste It'll save you quite a bit of time and effort by uh, using that copy paste function to get them in here. And I would, again, like we talked about a little bit ago, encourage our customers out there um, to you know, use your agency friends. You know, you can't bring these in and import them through agency friends, but you could sure use your agency friends as a list of folks that you would like to share yours to. Maybe you can divide and conquer a little bit of work here and do different chapters of your local fire codes or your state fire codes and then share them amongst yourselves to uh, help that out and everybody will be uh, better for it. So I'm just going to put these two in. I don't think we need to spend a lot of time. You've seen the process that we go to manually enter one and then again using the template to put one in. So I've saved that file. So what I'm going to do is close that up and we're going to right in here and select to import the fire codes. So when we've got it, select to import them, I'm going to go out and find that file, which should be uh, that one right at the top of the page. And we're going to bring it in. So this will stop at our data mapping page. Now mine, I don't have to map because I used our template and they're all set correctly. If you use your own file that you've saved as a CSV file type, and again, it has to be that CSV file type to import them, or it, it won't even bring this list up here. You may have to map them with basically means, you know, what did I name them versus what did emergency reporting call those columns? And once you map them correctly, it will bring that data into the correct 
fields in your fire code section. So now we've got the uh, file imported or brought in to our mapping. We've done our mapping. We're just going to come down here and select to save it and let it do its little magic. And you can see that we were successful because we've got this one in. That's one of the ones that I did. So that's the text of the NFPA code. And if I, let's go up and uh, I think we did rule five. And maybe I was incorrect on that. And we'll come down here and find it. Oh, just five. I didn't put the text in front of it. So that's the other one that I brought in through that import template. And it may take, if you're trying to upload a bunch of these at, at once, it may take a little bit of time to do that. Um, as always, when we're talking about imports, I recommend that we do the crawl, walk, run theory on getting your uh, fire codes imported. What I mean by that is learn how the system works. That's crawling. That's what we're doing today. To, to walk is to import maybe two or three codes. That will help you uh, learn to make sure you're using the system correctly and all the data is going in to particular fields correctly and it's displaying correctly for you. Um, now, if you put in, let's say you import a thousand rows of data at one time and then you find that you did it incorrectly. Now, there's one thing that I don't believe is on this page is a bulk delete function. So there you're, you're stuck with going in and deleting these one at a time. So please crawl, walk and run. Once you get it figured out, this is the way I want it to look. Yes, I did it. Everything's looking good. Then jump big with your import. Um, that's really a pretty good advice because I've helped multiple folks out on these imports that did an import and it didn't work out to the best satisfaction of anybody. So they're in there doing a lot of deleting and that creates a lot of extra work for you. All right. Mark. So, Mark. I, yes, sir. And it's a great time. Uh, Anthony asked a good question. He said, when our city or state updates to a newer code set, is there a way to bulk delete or bulk archive the old code before we import the new code? So I kind of, you kind of touched on the bulk operations and not having them. Uh, not necessarily, no. There is not a bulk operation per se. Now, here's what I would do if I were you. If I'm going to use a file to import it, the data, I'm going to retain that file. So maybe you want to break it down into save you a little bit of time and pull any code sections that are important to you. Let's say out of the international fire code by maybe import them by chapter or rules, whatever um, term they use. Retain that file. So in that code cycle, and I know that happens, you know, variable anywhere from like three to five years is pretty typical out there. Um, you can go in and update that template and then re-import them and that should update them for you. Or you can actually go into each one of them. There is the ability, if you can see over here on the right column to select the pencil to edit it. And then you can come in and simply, if it's the same information, maybe the additions change. Just come in here and update the addition. So it's, let's pretend it's 2021 and they've updated this and uh, they've put some new text in the code. Well, I can come in here and just do a copy paste right into this field, I'll have the updated text. And then and as you can see, I have edited this. And we're just gonna save it at this point. And I've updated my code. And you can see up here, I've got a uh, success banner. Um, now there's an important step that we're gonna talk about towards the end of this, but I first wanna talk about how this interacts with your inspection forms. So we've got our fire codes in, all the ones that I need. And they're set. Our next step is to go to our inspection forms. Back out to the settings page, down here to inspections and inspection forms. Now we've got to link our fire codes with our inspection forms. So in preparation for this today, I've created an inspection form down here. I've called it V Thursday. That's how we represent virtual Thursday, 2020-9 version 2.0. I'd like to mention why I put that version number behind it. 
Um, now that indicates to me that this is a uh, the second version of this form, and it was a major change from the first version I had in to this version. So I changed from version one to version two as I've updated it. Now let's say I need to update this particular um, form after I lock it and use it. Oh gosh, I need to add something to it. It's a miter change. I will change the title of it to like version 2.1. Pretty much keep track of which form am I using and I use as a process also. I will get rid of my old form as well. That's why I, I like using this version or you can date them as well. It's a good practice. Um, so let's go into the form. I'll show you how you link the inspection questions to the fire code. Very, very important step. Selecting my pencil to edit the inspection form. So within the form, I've got my title up here. I've got a description just that we're using it for the demo today. And I put in two categories. You can title these categories to what you need. I just simply called them category one and two. I sequenced them in the same order. When we come in here, you'll see that I have two questions also. Now, when we link the inspection form to our uh, fire code, what we need to do is go to that particular question, and you can do this as you're building the form, but if you copy an old form, create your new one out of your old one, you'll have to come in and edit this, and you can see that we've got two new selections down here. First is to add the fire code, and the second is to edit the fire codes. This will take us directly to the fire code page in our settings for the Oxy module. The best way to do this is to right click it, which in this case you can't do that. What this will do when we do this is take us to the fire codes page in the same tab, which I don't really like to do, but let's go ahead and add the code. So when we select add the code, here's our code list will come up. And we can tree down through this to find the particular ones that we want. And we're just gonna pull in this one, the timing of installation one that I put in. This is my text of the code and so forth. Select select and it brings it in here. Don't forget to save that. Now in the event you need to, you can actually add additional fire codes in the same inspection question. I don't think there's a limit to that, although I wouldn't, in my the way I would do it is not add too many. Once we get those put in correctly, we're going to go ahead and save the page and move on. And you can see I've got it tied, that question tied to two fire codes. We'll go to question two, select to edit it, and now go in and add, let's just put this NFPA 13 code in here. And select it, save it, and we're gonna go down to category two. Question three, edit, add my code. We'll go up here and pull something else that we had out of the, uh, 2017 Ohio fire code, selected. Take you a little bit of time. However, when you get this done, you're, you're gonna be flying, cooking with gas, as we say. Add fire code to number four, and we're gonna kind of stop there. I think you guys will get the point very, very quickly on how we need to go down through it. Pick the codes, save it, and do not forget if you if you need to, let's say you get interrupted, save often, save often, please save often. So I've updated the form, I've saved it, I could have locked it, but if we need to go back in and work on it some more because I didn't get all my changes done, please make sure you save it. And now we're going to go in back in and show you hopefully everything stuck that I selected there, which it did. Here's my fire codes in it. So we get done with the form. We're going to lock it. Another reminder for you, before you lock up your inspection form, please come down here and make sure 
that you have the uh, correct signature options selected. Some of these get retained when you change from uh, creating a new inspection form from an old inspection form. Some of these settings here will re be retained. Other ones will be, not be. And don't forget, you've got your closing notes. This was a big win a while back. We changed this from 500 character limit to 5,000. Actually, uh, I think they first changed this to 1,000, and that still wasn't good enough, so we uh, upped it again. When you put closing notes in, whatever they might be, that will be uh, printed out on any inspection form that you send out. So we've got everything in there. So uh, let's go ahead and lock the form and confirm that we want to do that. So now we have it locked, and we can use it. So how does this all work when we go do an inspection? Let's jump over here and we'll take a pause here for a moment and see if Greg or James has any other questions that are timely that we need to. Yeah, Mark, John brings up the question. So they currently list the applicable code in the explanation portion of their inspection questions. What's the advantage of doing it this way? I think it will give you more flexibility down stream down the road with updating them and it also will perhaps cut down on the size of your inspection form where you don't have that tech code text in every inspection question and it's really i think from my perspective knowing how the system works is that it's going to be a user preference to do it one way or the other so what i'm going to jump let me jump back to uh, an example and what I'm taking from that information, if I come into like this inspection form, for instance, and I'll just, we'll just take a peek at it. That's what we've done with this inspection form. We went into where we felt were the applicable rules and sections for the Ohio Fire Code. And we went in and our inspection question is basically the code number and the title. And the explanation is the text of the code. This is basically doing the fire codes, but doing it individually in the inspection question, not in the fire code section. It's going to be a personal preference how you folks want to handle this down, down, downstream. I think there's going to be some benefit to you to put it in the fire code section. That's the best I can give you. So hopefully that uh, is understandable. So let's go ahead and go in and run an inspection and show you what this looks like. So we're just going to go into this one at the top of the page, into this occupancy, go to the inspections and jump right down here. We're going to start a new inspection. And we're going to use that brand new form that we locked up. And it's going to be all the way down here at the bottom. And Put a contact in and go ahead and select next. And this is what it will look like in our inspection questions. So if I select here to add observation remarks and attachments, you can see the fire codes that I have attached to this particular one. And I can put my remarks in here. Basically, explanation of why we think this is a fire code violation and what you need to do to remedy that. If I have a file to upload, such as a photograph, I can go out and grab my good old photos, save it in here. I can put additional photos in here if I need to. Again, my fire code sections that I put in. And there we go. And one thing I did not do was to select my observation value, in this case, fail to fire code. That's the one that I have linked to the fire codes. It has to be an observation value that you selected fire code with, or it will not display in the printed version. We're going to show you that down here 
on this one, if I just pick the one that says fail for question two, we'll see how that renders out on the inspection report. So let's go down to the next category and put an explanation in. In this case, it's represented by a bunch of dots and make sure we have our observation value put in for failure for the fire code. And we'll do that again down here number four as we need to. And when we're conducting our inspection. Another, another feature I want to point out to you, our text in the remark section is only limited to 10,000 characters now. That's a great improvement over what it used to be. And we can uh, get our fire code form all done as we're going down through it. I'm sure yours are more than two categories with two questions in each category. So let's just uh, go out to the next page and we're going to conclude our inspection. Selected it, the inspection failed. And what I'll have to do is schedule that reinspection. I have mine set up that's going to force me to do that. And we're just going to throw that in. And once we get that, you'll see that is down here at the bottom of the page. That one. And we're going to go authorize this. And then when we view the inspection report or send it out via email, and we are going to show all of the results. Now let's take, uh, we want to see all of them here. View and print all of them. And this is what we get. So see, we've got our status. That's our observation value, fail fire code. And you see the fire code text displays on the page, just exactly what we brought in on that template. The question that we marked as fail that doesn't have the checkbox checkbox marked for fire code is not displaying here. So you have to you have to redo all these again for your observation values and everything else we put in here is looking pretty good to me. I didn't sign the form so uh, or it would have those signatures out here. So then uh, let's go ahead and close it and we'll see that that's inspection here. We'll just go ahead and do our follow-up inspection now. And yes, indeed, we want to go in and update this. And we will update this by this particular case. We are going to put in that we corrected the violation. You know, that's the one that doesn't say fire code behind it. And Save it. You can see my violation corrected is listed over here. Question two. In this particular case, we are going to select violation corrected fire code. Obviously, I will put some notes in about the uh, actual inspection. And in question three, we'll do the same. Update this. I always put a remark in here when I did a reinspection. Um, you know, observed. just so it was extremely clear to everybody that was reading this thing that I looked at it and the violation was no longer present. And then we'll come down here to uh, question four and just change that over. And we'll go ahead and save the form. Click on next. I do not have to schedule one because we've got a past inspection. So we're going to go ahead and go directly to page four, authorize it, and we'll take a look at it. And here we go for our violation corrected without that extra text I put in. Oh, the ones we have fire code check mark, you can see that my fire code text is not there anymore. 
down here as I put in the correct one, all my text is there. Same thing, question um, three and four. So off we go with that. So that is a basic demo of how all of that works. Now, the last thing we're going to really talk about here um, with the presentation, and um, we, can, we can take an actual pause again. Um, James or Greg, do you guys have any other yep. questions we need yep. to address? We got a couple of new questions in there, Mark. I'll hit the first two, and I think James will take the next two after that. Okay, perfect. Um, so the first one we got in there from Ryan, um, as we attach fire codes to inspection forms, and we realize that we need to copy the form so changes can be made, will the fire codes go with it, or do we need to reattach those? Well, no, the, the fire codes do go with it. So it, what's, what you're talking about here, let's, let's go ahead and let's test my theory out. Okay, so I need to update my inspection form. Okay, so that's, the, I'm gonna just do a copy and uh, of the title here. We're gonna add a new form. So I believe this is what he's asking, right? So I'm going to make this version 3.0. And I'm gonna start with that one. So let's bring in this one. So I just created the new form off of the old one. Did everything stick? And there it is. So yes, the answer is yes, they did. Okay, hopefully that answers Ryan's question. If not, he'll put another comment in. Uh, the next question from Anthony is, um, does this uh, cross over to inspect DR? Well, I have not tested that yet. My assumption is yes, because inspect DR brings in these same exact inspection forms. So let's see, make a note for him of his yep. name and we will send him an email. We'll confirm that. I don't want to take time of logging into um, inspect ER, I would actually have to go out and do all the work I just did here into that account that I have linked to uh, a login for inspect ER that I have. But we'll do that at a later time and we'll email him on that. So I'll, I'll rely upon you, Greg, to uh, note down who it I was in their email yep. address. I will take awesome. care of that. Perfect. What's next? Mark Brad asked, are, inspe are explanations still required on the inspection forms? Yes, there's been no change with that. Um, so if we come in and edit that, so he's talking about this field here. So if you really don't have an explanation, it's still a required field. So if I, let's remove that text. And if I try to save this, you see I get an error, explanation required. If you don't have an explanation because you're using fire codes down here, Here's how you get around that, a period. That's a, that's a character, and now that page will save. So, and you can see down here, there's my, my dot, so it's saved. Good enough? Yeah, we got, there's a couple, couple others here. Um, if we make changes to current observation values, will it have an impact on existing inspection histories? considering deleting previous and creating new fire code observations? It may affect some of the reports that are tied directly to observation values if they're still not there. That is another area where this is so new that I haven't been able to spend any time testing that. Um, and what we're talking about is, is this, let me go down to my observation values. In this particular list, it, it would make sense to me if I have one that's for fail or you know fire code violation or discrepancy, whatever terminology I'm using. Um, so I've got this replicated here three times, and this is all for training in that. However, why well, have three of them that say fail? So let's just clean this up as the concept. So if I will come over here and delete this observation value, is that going to affect reports that report out on observation values? How many code violation do we? Um, observe, in other words. I do not know that answer. My assumption is that it could affect some of those reports. So that's something that we, we need to test or you can test 
on your own. We'll, we'll find that information out. That's something that's on our hit list to test. Just haven't got to it yet. It, it, Mike asked a question of once off beta, will the information added in the inspections, pre-plans and hazards tab be auto save versus scrolling up or down to save? Generally speaking, in the occupancy module, the answer is no. What he's asking about, and this is in the the new format. Right now, if I come into this particular occupancy and need to change any data on this page, such as putting data into the national grid field, it does not autosave. We have to save it, and that will continue. Anything else? Nice now, I think we're caught up. Tom's uh, Tom's adding a couple comments for everybody. If you guys want to take a look at them as well, uh, he's putting some of them in there for everybody. But other than that, we're caught up, I believe. Okay, so one thing I want to mention, so everybody pay attention, please. It's very, very important. So let's say I need to update my fire codes because the state, local authority, whomever generates your code, the NFPA, if you've got NFPA codes in here, we all know they go on a revision cycle. And uh, let's say this NFPA code gets updated. So I can come in here and update my text. So I am going to just remove that text here. and update my text whatever way I need to do that. And we're going to save it. So now you can see under secondary description, it talks about this is the updated fire code text. The important step with this is what we have to do now is go back into our inspection form. So if I go into this version three, so I'm going to have to recreate my inspection form. And one of these questions we had that NFPA 13 code attached to one of these must be, I think we did anyways. Yeah, maybe I did not. So that was not a good one to update. I'm going to do this one 102.3.3. I'm going to simply duplicate my tab. back into the fire codes. One oh two three point two. And in this case I'm going to take that text out. Update that text. So again, I've updated that text just like I did down here. But what I have to do when we go in to look at this inspection form, I'm going to just save the form and I'll go back in and look at it. And that was that section. Even if I come over here to edit this, you'll see that the text in here doesn't update until I remove it and then put it back in. So we have to pretty much keep track of where we're going through. And here, let me make sure I've got that. Ah, it's that section. Is that the one I did right here? And it's not. Let's jump back over here. Make sure we've updated it. Yes, we have. I'm trying to keep track of where I am. So it's in section 102, rule one.
we'll get back down to the inspection form. And I am not seeing it updated here. Maybe we stumbled upon a bug, or maybe I have it stuck somewhere where I don't recall. Uh, let's do I'm having trouble finding that. We might may have stumbled upon a bug here, but basically the, the the gist of this is is that I will have to take out that fire code and add back in the text that's been edited and then save the page or it won't update that. It's not a live link between my inspection form and the text of the code. And this is that one that I'm looking for and there must be some reason that that is not what available for me out there. I just updated this text right there. Hey, Mark, I think Anthony stumbled upon it or, or mentioned it. Uh, I think you were looking in the 2017 when you were in your ah. list. And you said it was that, oh. that you stored that change in the 2021. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So let's go back in and do No, that. Anthony's paying attention. Whether James and I are to help you out, I don't know, but. He's entirely correct because I did demonstrate that change before. And here we got it right here. Thank you. If we ever meet, so here's my updated text right there. Now I've updated that. And that's the uh, way we have to um, manually do that operation because it's not a live link in here. So that's something that as your fire codes get updated, you'll have to go back into the applicable inspection form and update those as you're going down through here just like you would have to update the inspection questions if they you put the full text of the code in you would have to do that as well so that's basically concluding all the demo that we had for you today let's check back with um, Greg and James we're getting close to the bewitching hour where we need to put this one to bed so let's follow up with any additional questions we might have. Greg, are you understanding what Anthony Lee's asking here? I am not. I was just reading that a second time. We need a script to push these out to the forms when updated. Anthony, are you giving like a feature suggestion? Is that what you're saying there? That's what I'm taking. I'm looking at it too, guys. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I don't disagree with you, Anthony. It's a feature suggestion. I, I do not happen to know if that is uh, in the queue for development down the road, but I would certainly um, hope that they would be considering that as, a, as our development teams. Um, and I do not disagree with you at all that's too much work this way when you do a well-developed inspection form based off of your local fire codes state fire codes whatever the case may be when they update those codes it is a significant amount of work for us to update our inspection forms anyways and there's no uh, difference with this i would hope that eventually that would be uh, developed and anthony please go into the community forums and into that feature suggestions and put it in there um, they're still working on updating parts of this. Uh, maybe that'll attract some attention and uh, they'll uh, do what we're uh, talking about here is that live update through a script, whatever method they need to do um, to update that. So Mark, real quick, um, if you could go back to the template. Um, I, I know one thing that, you know, we've heard from a couple people already that seems like this is a lot of work, um, but, if the, the new code comes out and 
let's say we're lucky enough as as users of the code that they don't do a lot of actual substantive changes. You mentioned earlier that once you put the information into the template, you suggest saving it. What is it about the template when they go to then upload the new code information so that they can overwrite what's currently into the system? What What's the new template going to look at and say, okay, this is just overwriting old data versus entering a whole new set of code that then they have to go in and delete a bunch of stuff out? Well, that's something that we are in the midst, midst of testing ourselves. Um, being just so new, I haven't had time to go in and take the actual template, as I demonstrated before, of importing that. I did import the uh, sections that we're seeing in here. Um, so if we go into the template that we retained and update that and re-import that same template, and it will only update the sections that we changed, that is our assumption, but we have not fully tested that yet. So hopefully that's the information he needed. We haven't fully tested it. Um, we're going to, in this account, actually, um, there's a good chance of within the next couple working days for me that I will have time to get in to fully test that. And what, what happens? Where's it tied to in here if we update it? We'll find out that answer. What we're going to do also with that information is in the knowledge base article we have available on our support page for fire codes, we will put that information into it. So if you use the template to bring in your fire codes, and if you edit the template and bring it in, how what's the reaction within the list of codes here? We'll find that information out and post it in that knowledge base article. Hopefully that will get done early next week. Do we have anything else, guys? I'm not I think seeing any questions. questions. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and thank everybody for attending today. I want to personally thank Greg and James for helping me out with this. It's kind of hard to fly the ship um, by yourself. It's great to have these wingmen out there helping us out. And we really appreciate it. So uh, for everybody out there in your communities, stay safe. And we'll see you on the next installment of Virtual Thursday. Everyone have a great day.